Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna look at how to create two different hexagon backgrounds in DaVinci Resolve. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get started. To get started, let's bring Fusion Composition Clip into the timeline and then take it directly to the Fusion page. Here, we're gonna go to Tools, then Shapes, and you're going to see a suite of different nodes here that you can take advantage of to create awesome shapes. But for now, we're just gonna focus on S and Gun. So let's bring that node into the node editor and if we look at this node itself, we don't really see anything. The reason is because very much like particles in 3D, we need a render node. So let's bring S render into the node editor. Then we're going to connect S and gun to S render. Then if we look at the S render node itself, we can now see the shape. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is to change the size of the hexagon. And the way we're gonna do it is by adding an expression to the width parameter. So let's right click and then in the menu, select expression. Now, all we need to do is to drag and then drop that little plus sign on top of the height parameter. So this will link the width parameter to the height parameter. Now, as we make changes to the height parameter, you will see that the width parameter will also change accordingly. This will ensure that our little hexagon will always stay in the perfect proportion. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is to add a S merge node after S ngon, and very much like other merge nodes, the idea is that we can connect multiple nodes to it, and that's exactly what we're gonna do next. So we're going to make a copy of the S ngon node, then simply paste it, and connect the pasted S ngon node to the S merge node. So now we have two hexagons in our composition and we're going to change the position of the second hexagon by changing the X offset and the Y offset parameters. So the idea here is that we want the two hexagons to be staggered, and also we want the space in between the two hexagons to be neither too narrow nor too wide. And adjusting the X offset and the Y offset will really help us achieve that. So that looks good, and uh, we're going to leave it at that. Now at this point, all we need to do is to simply duplicate these two hexagons. And the way we're gonna do that is by plugging in a S grid node after the S merge node. So let's do that. Now you're gonna see by default, the system created a three by three grid. We're gonna change that to something like 10 by 10, which will fill up the screen much better. We're also going to change the X offset and the Y offset parameters which will then change the position of the duplicates. So the idea is that we just want the space in between hexagons to be nice and even. And uh, this is also a good opportunity to hold down the command key while we make the changes so that the change is going to be in much smaller increments in order to allow more precise editing. All right, at this point, things are slowly starting to shape up. So the next thing we wanna do is to add a background node, which will become visible to us through the cracks in between hexagons. So let's add a background node and bring that into our node editor, connect the S render node to the background node, and then connect the merge node to media out one. So the background node by default, as you can see, is just black. And we're gonna change that by changing the type from solid color to gradient. Now, the first thing we're gonna do here is to change the direction of the gradient so that it's running from top to bottom. Then we're also going to change the colors of the gradient and we're gonna change the left-hand side from black to something that's like yellowish. Then on the right-hand side, we're gonna change it to something that's much brighter. So uh, that looks good for now. The only other thing we need to work on now is to change the color of the hexagons themselves. And to do that, we're going to add a bitmap node. So let's uh, bring that bitmap node into the node editor and then connect the S render node to the bitmap node. Now, just note that you can also change the color of the hexagons by going back to the S ngon node and under style, change the color, but this doesn't offer a lot of versatility. So we're gonna go with a different approach. So if we look at the bitmap node itself right now, it's being mapped out uh, based on the alpha channel and that's fine. And all we need to do is to bring in a uh, background node and then connect bitmap to the background node. So if we look at the background node itself right now, we can see that the colors of the hexagons have taken on the default black. And we're gonna change that later. For now, let's just connect the background node to the merge node as the foreground. So if we go back to the background node, we're going to change the type from solid color to gradient. And once again, we're going to change the direction of the gradient to top to bottom. So let's do that. Now, as far as color goes, I'm going to change the left one 
from black to something that's dark reddish then the right hand side i'm going to change to completely black okay now if we look at our output right now guys this is uh this is pretty much it now of course we can continue to fine tune this by changing the color or working on the gradient we can change the colors on the gradient we can change the direction of the gradient or change um, the, the scale uh, but uh, as far as the look of this background goes guys this is pretty much it for our first example for our second example here we're going to take advantage of the workflow that we already have for our first example so let's go back to the background node simply change the type from gradient to solid color so now it's the default black for our hexagons we're also going to disconnect the background node instead replace it with a fast noise node so let's bring the fast noise node into the node editor and then connect it to the merge node as the background now if we look at the fast noise node itself it doesn't really have a lot going on right now so what we're going to do is to go to the color tab and change the um, type from two color to gradient so let's do that and then uh, in terms of the color we're going to leave the left hand side at black and the right hand side we're going to change it to a different shade of blue um, i think i'm going to lean towards something like cyan so let's let's do that so now let's come back to the noise tab and change the pattern of the noise by changing detail contrast and scale parameters but ultimately guys we want to create a pattern that will really pop that will really stand out when we look at the hexagons so guys once we finish these let's uh, look at the output that we have uh, right now um yeah guys i think this is uh this is looking really good this is the kind of look that i'm going for another thing we can do at this point is to add a glow effect so let's do that let's bring in a glow node and add it after uh, the merge node so let's do that now the two parameters that we're going to adjust here are glow size and glow so what we're trying to go for here is a kind of futuristic cool looking effect but this really depends on your preference um, but yeah this is basically it guys for our second example i hope this tutorial helps hope it gives you some ideas and inspires you to do something to create something cool on your own and i will see you next time